What's up everybody and welcome back to Overvolted. If you saw the last video, you saw us go over unboxing all of these components for our new electric bike that we're gonna be building. And today we're gonna to build it. So if you haven't seen that video, take a look at the video link in the description or maybe there's a pop-up around here somewhere um, and go watch that. That gives you all the nitty gritty details. But let's get to it. This is just gonna take five easy steps to get this thing on the road. I really haven't counted those, but I'm gonna make sure it makes five steps by the end of this video. We're gonna put the motor on, we're gonna mount the motor controller, we're gonna figure out where to mount the battery. We're also going to update the bike with all sorts of stuff that is just lackluster from the factory. Replace the bars, the everything. And then step five is ride it. All right, we got the bike up on the stand here and I am hoping this is a pretty straightforward build. There's pretty much three main components to any e-bike. It's the motor, which in our case, we are going to be using this hub motor that we talked about in the last video. Um, it is going to be replacing this back rim. So we will take this off, take the tire and the tube and switch it over to that one and pop that in. So the motor will be in the back the speed controller that controls that motor, I'm planning to mount right here. And the battery, I'm planning to mount here. So it's actually pretty simple. You just have to figure out where you're going to mount all those things. Technically, a big heavy hub motor on the back wheel is unsprung weight. So it's going to be a lot of extra rotating mass on this back tire. Um, but the nice thing about a hub motor is that you don't have to worry about where to mount the motor. It's just going to fit already into where this rear rim is. Rear rim, rear rim, rear rim, rear rim. It's gonna fit in right where this rim is and you don't have to worry about where to mount it. I've got one extra step that I'm gonna do ahead of time, which is just take off, just remove all the parts that I'm not gonna be keeping. So I'm gonna be converting this to a one by setup. So a lot of that stuff can go, the cables and the derailleur and whatnot. Um, I'm gonna be replacing the forks and the handlebars and I'm gonna do that first just to get it into a good state. If you have a bike and you're following along at home and you already have all the components on it that you want, then you can skip that part. This is how you know these are knockoff Shimano components. For one, the Shimano is kind of, you know, running outside its boundaries there. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but Shimano is actually the original bike components. Oh, look at that. Someone's whiteout job got a little sloppy. After looking at this, I've decided that I don't really love this color scheme and it's not gonna go with some of the accessories I have. So that plus the fact that I'm gonna have to grind off some of these little guys and it will be exposed metal there. I'm thinking I'm just gonna paint the sucker. I will probably wire brush it. I'm not sure if these are stickers or not, but they probably are, but they're underneath a clear coat layer. I'll probably wire wheel it and see if I can, uh, at least to rough up the surface and see if these are easy, easy to take off. If not, I will probably just rough it up, paint over it with some self-etching primer and give it a new look. Let's do it.
All right, guys, so currently this is the frame. I took a wire brush and kind of took it down to just bare metal. Well, for the most part, bare metal. Um, and I saw when I was doing that, that this whole bottom part that I thought was welded all the way onto this tube is only welded at the bottom. And maybe that would be enough. Maybe that would hold everything completely fine. But since we're putting in a 5,000 watt hub motor and I don't want this thing to snap in half, I was thinking maybe I should weld it. You know what I've never done? Weld anything in my life. And I didn't have a welder, so I went out to Harbor Freight, because where else would you go? And I got this little guy. It plugs into 110, so it's probably not very great, but that's what I got. And so I'm setting this up, and I'm gonna try my hand at just kind of running a nice bead of weld or whatever. Um, down the two sides of this just to strengthen it up. It's the same on the other side. We're back in the studio and the bike is up on the stand. Take a look. This is before painting and for the final reveal, how did the welds turn out? Oh my goodness, look at that. That, that is terrible. It's at least not pretty. Will it help structurally hold it together? Uh, maybe, probably, right? Sure, They're better than nothing, I guess. Um, I was about to grind it all down and make it like a little bit flat and flush, but I am not experienced at metalworking or welding, obviously. So instead of doing that and potentially cut through the weld and then have to redo it or whatever, I am going to use a little a little automotive secret, Bondo. And I'm gonna put some Bondo over it and make it a nice smooth line, sand it all down, all that stuff. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna do that on both sides and we'll see how it looks. Ooh, doesn't that look nice? The Bondo work is done. It looks uh, still pretty mm, terrible, but I think it looks better than my welding did. I've taped off all these places that we don't want to paint and I'm gonna get a base coat on it. Okay, so for the paint that I'm using, we're gonna start off with this self-etching primer. This is Rust-Oleum Automotive paint and the self-etching makes it do some sort of voodoo magic that sticks to everything better. So if you wanna have, you know, betterness, I'm gonna start off with this. For a rattle can job, I will take it. I think it looks pretty slick. What do you guys think? I like this flat black aesthetic. I think it's gonna go with the accessories well. And uh, other than my welds, which look pretty horrible, um, I think it turned out pretty good. So I did not love this bottom bracket that came with this bike. It was kinda, it was kinda clunky. Like maybe it wasn't greased properly or whatever. So I went just to replace it, but I could not find a 170 millimeter, uh, you know, for this fat bike size bottom bracket locally. And I want to get this done. So I ended up just removing that dust seal from these bearings and kind of repacking them with, with grease. It made it a lot better and a lot smoother. So we're going to reuse it. All right, the bottom bracket's all lubed up, the crank sets on, and little seat clamps on, the seat post clamps on. I think it's looking good already. Let's keep going. All right, everybody, now it's time to install the fork. I'm planning to use these 
Ally Express pedals that were under seven dollars. They're like six dollars and seventy cents or something like that. They're pretty good size, as you can see. They kind of look like Crank Brothers stamp style pedals. Um, so I'm planning to use these for this build because they're flat black and they will match. I threw this crank set on so that we can see and make sure that when this is all in and lined up, see I could drill that hole and mount it, mount it like that if I want, but when it's all in and lined up straight, it's actually a perfect fit. Plenty of room for the wheel and plenty of room for the chain and the crank. It's not gonna interfere. I could also slide it a little over if I wanted to make sure of that, but we'll do a little dry fit once we have more stuff on before I permanently mount this. I wanted to mount it the other direction with all these connections on the bottom side, but it just didn't fit right. Um, this little nublet here was hitting right into this frame, and it also I thought it would look cool because all the cords would be hidden, but then also all the very important connections are gonna be at the bottom. So if you kinda high center yourself there, you might break something bad. So instead I'm gonna mount it upright like this. And if I want to cover up the cord mess that may be in this area, I might print something, 3D print something that covers this spot up, kind of like a fender situation. Now that we've got the new single speed freewheel on this thing, let's prepare the rear rim. So. It's got these little holes where all the spokes are mounted and some of them have a little bit of burrs. I'm gonna just clean off those burrs with a little file. And then what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna put some of this gaffer's tape around the entire rim so that it kind of gives a protection layer and it won't rub on the tube and pop it. All right, so we got a problem. So when I ordered this bike online from the company, I asked them what the rear dropout spacing was because that's very important. That's the spacing between these two brackets where your back wheel goes. That's very important because when you order a hub motor and specifically have one custom made with exactly your specifications, it's gotta be perfect. For fat bikes like this, you see a lot of, a lot of ones coming in at 170, 190 and I think there are even some larger sizes now um, But they guaranteed me that this was a hundred and seventy millimeter spacing Well, guess what? <laughs> it's not it's not a hundred seventy millimeter spacing So that custom motor that I ordered will not fit this frame Luckily, I do have a duplicate motor that I already used on a different bike build that I'm going to take for this. It's essentially all the same specs. It's also a custom four turn motor, just like the one that I talked about. It's just the only difference is a 190 millimeter spacing. So I'm gonna be swapping out for that motor going forward and then I will have to find another build and mainly another bike that definitely has 170 millimeter back spacing on the rear dropouts so that I can actually use my motor I bought. No biggie, let's keep moving. Oh boy, I really should have tried to plug all those cords in before I mounted the wheel and put the torque arm on and everything. Well, I'm just gonna struggle for a little bit then. I've got these little uh, tiny underdeveloped screwdrivers that hopefully will uh, help me out. Oh, no.
You guys, I can't do this when the camera's in my armpit. I'll put you back on once I get it, and we'll test it. All right, thanks for joining me on the ground. Um, we have this wired up. So it's just kind of temporary. I need to clean all this up, but I just wired up a little adapter for the Greenworks battery that we talked about using. Boom, this guy here. It's a 80 volt battery, and actually it's a 72 volt nominal uh, battery. And it's all wired up, the motor's in place, and I'm just gonna connect it all and just do a little proof of concept. It made a sound. Check that out, it is turned on. So I know this is, of course, not its final form. Can't ride it around too easily like that. But at least it's working. It shows 100% battery. It has a speedometer in kilometers an hour, which is, I mean, who uses anything else? Okay, and of course, we are going all the way up to its maximum of five. Let's see what it does. This is obviously with no weight or no load on it at all, but I mean, this should be a theoretical top speed, and we haven't even tried to tune the controller. So I should be able to connect Bluetooth to the speed controller and see if I can make the RPMs go higher and the speed go faster. Okay, so that is terrifying. Look at that, 73.4 kilometers. Okay, in this little setup, let's see what else we got here. The M button is for, I don't know, menu, memory, maximums. Oh look, it's changing through some things. Average speed, max speed was 74.1. Um, RT speed, what is that? Do you guys know what that stands for? Is that just the current speed? Yeah, that's probably just the current speed. That's the right now speed. Real time, real time, I got there. Real time speed. And press and hold, and it's off. Look at that! Whoa, it scared me, it has an alarm system? I thought I sat on a mouse. My goodness. Wow, okay, what I was gonna say is, <laughs> so it's, it's functional, I need to clean up the wiring here, and I need to get brakes on it, I need to get the chain on it, so there's still a handful of things that are undone, but this, at least, completes this test, and now I can get it upright back on the bike stand, even though my bike stand's not really rated for a bike this heavy now, but we'll see if it works. We'll get it back up there and finish her up. Okay, so I just tuned the controller using the MQCon app. All I did was go in there and I changed a couple settings. I did the hall sensor test, and then I changed one other setting that was a 30 up to a 50 to give it some more RPM, and boy did it. It went from, what was it, 44 or 46 or whatever it was, all the way up to 99. Yes, 99. Look at this, I can even show you. Well, let me, let me set you down here real quick. Let me get you sat. Okay, so check this out. 99.8 was my max speed. And I know it wasn't on camera, so you guys don't believe it, so I know you're gonna want me to show you. Um, so let's just do it, guys. It's all hooked back up. And here we go. Oh, that is nuts. That's crazy. Okay, so again, this is totally without any sort of load at all, no rider on it, no, no anything, no resistance, but 99.8 kilometers an hour? Obviously, you know off the top of your head, it is this many miles per hour, and that seems pretty fast. All right, guys, like you saw, this thing is gonna rip. I'm really excited to get it out on the road and see how fast it goes. Um, so, like I said, we got brakes to do, we got some cable cleanup to do, we gotta figure out where the battery's gonna go. Let's do it!
You probably just saw a lot of time lapses of me building all this thing. That's because it, it took me a long time because I'm doing this after work, late hours, that sort of stuff. So it took me multiple days and so my clothing probably like changed around a lot, but that's why it really was a pretty simple build. This bike frame had a lot of room right here to stuff as many components as I could. So that worked great. Before we head outside, let's look at it a little more closely here. Um, we've got this new stem, the new fork, all of this stuff that we're looking at here. 180 millimeter rotors with Tektro disc brakes. They all plug in to this nice controller. So this isn't, this isn't super pretty up here. I don't know how to make this snake nest look a little bit nicer, but uh, I might try to wrap them together or something like that to make it look a little cleaner. But these brakes feed into our motor controller to tell it whenever you're applying brake to not be sending power to the back tire, which is, which is good because you don't want that. We got some big beefies, loving it. Race face bars. I'll show you what the cockpit looks like. I mean, look at that. And then down here, we've got the 3D printed battery mount, so it will accept Greenworks 80 volt batteries. And I just lowered it, I attached it to the bottom bottle cage mount, and it's very sturdy, so that's all I'm gonna do. Take a look at the new crank set, the new pedals, the new chain ring, new chain, and the now 190 millimeter, 5,000 watts, 72 volt, I think it's an 8,000 peak rear hub motor. So that's exciting. I need to get something 3D printed to maybe mount here and just kind of cover up this whole top piece. It's, it all tucks away pretty nicely up there, but it's a little bit just un, unsightly. I, oh yeah, I unplugged the siren because it kept scaring me. <laughs> and I don't like that. I did leave a little bit of space here, a little bit of cord on this battery cable, just in case I switch from the Greenworks batteries to something else later, and maybe the input is somewhere else. So I left a little bit extra space there, but I'll show you the other side. But it comes down nicely on this side of the controller. There's the power, it goes under the frame. Everything's nicely tucked in, and then another 180 millimeter rotor back here with, of course, hydraulic brakes as well. And the kickstand's back. Yeah, oh, that isn't good. So, I've already had my first issue. As you see, I have the bike outside, but I did not have the camera on for this. I wish I did. Just getting it up the back hill I put a little bit of power to the motor and it snapped the torque arm. Look at that. The torque arm has been torqued. It's done and it just cracked this ring in half. Um, the, the motor itself came out of the dropout and actually spun a couple times pulling the cable back, which didn't seem like it did any damage there, but I was able to unwind it. I hope there's no damage to the motor. And I pretty much had to just on the hillside get the wheel set back in, the dropouts, and tightened enough that I could get up here to show you guys. So yeah, it's got a lot of power. All right, so I was really bummed when that broke and I just could not end the video like that. So we fast forward to now, which is a week or so later where I, I did some research and I ordered some thicker, heavier duty torque arms from Grin Technology, and I also doubled them up. I put one on each side, tightened it all down, made sure it was all nicely fully sitting in the dropouts, and now I am very confident that it can actually take the torque and also stay in the frame so it doesn't explode on me again. So really, there's only one thing left to do. Let's ride it. I've got a GoPro here mounted to the helmet, so you can come with me on the first ride. That is awesome that this whole thing is powered by this Greenworks battery. All right, the mic is now set to cancel out wind and other noises. Hopefully you can still hear me. But yes, it looks like seven and a half miles an hour is what one um, assist level one tops out at. Let's try number two. It looks like it's 
Looks like it's around 16 and a half to 17. Let's try number three. So that was about 25 miles per hour on number three. Let's go to four. Oh, and this is a hill. I'm gonna to try to time this so it doesn't affect it too terribly much. All right, that was over 30, but I was going downhill. Let's see what it gets going uphill. It still got just over 30 going uphill, 30 miles per hour. That's awesome. So should we go to level five? This is the top speed. Let's see what happens. Wow. Okay, wow guys, I think I hit 42 miles per hour in level five. I don't know if you can hear the sound of the bike, but you hear this whirring of the electrical motor, of the electric motor, and it's just, uh, it's just awesome. It's a beast, an absolute beast. The torque, this thing has torque aplenty. I really have never just slammed this down. It seems like it could pick up at the front end, but I'm going to try not to do that. So, um, I don't put as much stress on the rear dropouts. Um, but it has a lot of torque and I mean, honestly, 42 or 43 or whatever I hit miles per hour on a bicycle. I think that's as fast as I want to go on a bicycle guys. I think this is perfect. It has a good top speed, but not, not too crazy. It's still faster than like a 50 CC moped or something like that. Um, and it's electric and you can pedal it. Let's do it again. Roll on the throttle here, 30, 35, 40, 41 and a half, and I let off the throttle. Oh my gosh, I let off the throttle. That's how fast it accelerated. Three, two, one. Beep. Two, Mississippi, three, Mississippi. Okay, so that's about three seconds. That's about three Mississippis from a standstill to get up to 30 miles an hour. And honestly, I was rolling on the throttle very slowly because I did not want to, uh, I was just a little bit hesitant. I did not want to flip it or, or put, you know, 100% torque to the back and uh, on its first, you know, voyage out. Let's see if this thing can go off road. Okay, for this, I'm gonna go back down into, let's go to assist level three. Oh boy, that front shock is just eating up those bumps. Here's some more chop coming up. Yep, those nice poofy tires really help out. So I do notice one thing just now that I'll need to change. Let me stop here, but it looks like when I'm going off road, the battery's bouncing around up and down a little bit. I almost need to put a, I don't know if you can see that, but I almost need to put like a little piece of foam or something like this, either on the bottom of the battery or at the top of the frame, just so it's not bouncing as much. Um, and it's a little bit more stabilized, but 
other than that, let's, let's keep going. Let's see what it does. And I have a pretty, uh, our yard is pretty hill forward. So this is really giving it a good test. Oh, it feels really good on level three. Let's go off road here and, oh. Ooh, very nice. The front suspension is really pretty good. This uh, Ally Express triple crown or dual, what is it, double crown? Whatever, this is Ally Express double crown fork is actually pretty decent. And I'm just standing up right now. I mean, look at the, I'm gonna see if it can just crawl up this at like five miles an hour. This is a pretty decent size hill. Absolutely no problem. Just lovely. Guys, this is awesome. I'm super pumped and thank you for watching this video. Uh, please like and subscribe if you can. It helps me to do more projects like this, which I would just love to continue doing. So hit like, get subscribed and uh, hit that notification bell so you can see when I post videos and give me your suggestions. Let me know in the comments what you think of this thing and what should I do with it next? See ya!